Periodontitis refers to the inflammation of the supporting periodontal tissues surrounding the tooth. It is caused by specific groups of microorganisms and results in progressive destruction of the periodontal fibers and the alveolar bone. Chronic periodontitis has a slow rate of progression and most commonly affects adults and sometimes even children and adolescents. Its relation with diabetes mellitus has been researched for many years and is now well established that hyperglycemia could influence progression of periodontal disease. There is also a growing body of evidence implicating chronic periodontitis in affecting glycemic control and aggravating complications in diabetes. So let's have a look at how one affects the other. Now the influence of diabetes mellitus on a periodontal disease has been well established over the years. It is reported that individuals with diabetes have a threefold increased risk of developing periodontal disease than individuals without diabetes. However, it has to be remembered that research implicates poorly controlled diabetes as a risk factor for periodontal disease as opposed to diabetic patients with good glycemic control who have been reported not to have any significant risk of developing periodontitis. It is also established that patients with both types of diabetes type 1 and type 2 are at an increased risk of developing periodontal disease. Now poorly controlled diabetes by itself does not directly cause periodontitis but affects how periodontal tissues respond to local factors like plaque thereby creating an environment conducive for the development of the disease. Research initially focused on the influence of diabetes on the oral microbial flora but it was found that there was not much difference in the composition of the microbial flora in the periodontally diseased sites of individuals with and without diabetes. There is a lack of sufficient evidence to implicate diabetes in affecting the oral microbial composition. Neutrophils are the first line of defense during any inflammatory response. Chemokines in the local inflammatory environment help the neutrophil chemotaxis and migration to the inflamed site. And once in the site, neutrophils, phagocytose microbes or other foreign bodies responsible for triggering inflammation. However, neutrophils in diabetics have defective adherence, chemotaxis and phagocytosis. This may lead to survival and proliferation of microbes in the periodontal tissues, further aggravating periodontitis. In general, monocytes and macrophages, apart from phagocytosing microbes, also release pro-inflammatory cytokines like tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-1 beta. It has been reported that patients with poorly controlled diabetes have an increased pro-inflammatory cytokine load. The monocytes and macrophages in diabetes patients have been reported to be hyper-responsive, releasing more than usual tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin 1 beta, leading to excessive periodontal tissue breakdown. Accumulation of advanced glycation end products, abbreviated as AGEs, is one of the most important reasons for increased periodontal disease risk in diabetes patients. AGEs could influence periodontal destruction by altering collagen metabolism and immunoinflammatory response. Glycation, simply put, is basically the covalent bonding of a sugar molecule with a protein or a lipid molecule. And this glycation process leading to formation of AGEs is a normal phenomenon. However, in the hyperglycemic state, AGEs form and accumulate in excess, and these end products interfere with normal collagen metabolism. They form crosslinks in collagen, thereby making them difficult to be repaired or replaced. And this results in accumulation of bad or damaged collagen for long periods, since they cannot be repaired or replaced normally. Hence, diabetes patients have aged, unhealthy collagen that is susceptible to easy breakdown and has poor healing or self-repair capacities. AGEs, apart from interfering with collagen metabolism, have also been reported to cause immunoinflammatory alterations. AGEs interact with self-surface receptors called Receptor for Advanced Glycation End Products, abbreviated as RAGE, on inflammatory cells like monocytes and macrophages. And this AGE-RAGE interaction can cause an increased production of free radicals like reactive oxygen species 
And pro-inflammatory cytokines like tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-1 beta, all of which cause periodontal tissue destruction. Now, similar to the effect diabetes has on periodontal disease, it is also known that periodontitis may have an effect on the glycemic control of individuals. In fact, it is established that severe periodontitis can not only worsen the glycemic control of diabetes patients, but also increase the risk for non-diabetics to develop the disease. One of the major effects of chronic inflammation is increasing insulin resistance. Now, the more the insulin resistance, the more it is difficult for sugar to enter tissues, thereby increasing blood sugar. Periodontitis is a result of persistent chronic inflammation of the periodontal tissues. The saliva and the gingival cricular fluid of individuals with chronic periodontitis are known to show increased pro-inflammatory cytokine levels like tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin 1 beta. And this dysregulated inflammatory environment could aggravate insulin resistance. Clinical trials have also shown that HB1AC levels in diabetics reduced by 0.36% after periodontal treatment. Periodontal therapy has also shown to reduce pro-inflammatory cytokine levels in the serum, which could possibly lead to improvements in the glycemic control in patients with diabetes.